Good morning, afternoon, and evening, all you reptile fans out there. Um, today, I've got a bunch of things that I'm going to do. So I figured I'd bring you along with me on some of my care and some things with the beardies. Um, we did get a new beardie, so I'm so excited about that. And um, I'm going to tile Pringle's cage, I think, tonight. I've been putting it off because I've been so busy, but I think I'm going to get that done tonight. Um, we're going to do some dubia feeding and some other things. But first, I just finally got on the Pangea wagon train. You can see here, I got my first order from Pangea. So let's open it together and see what I got. Right, guys, so I got the tape off the box and everything, and I'm getting ready to open it up. Um, I also want to let you guys know that we are not endorsed any way by Pangea, but I have used their Crested Gecko food for a long time. So um, I really like the fig and insect food because it's got the insect part of it. And um, a few of mine aren't very good at insect eating. So it looks like we've got some little pods for the isopods here. They love to eat these and they're great for their enclosures. So we got a full pack of little, I think these are magnolia pods, but I'm not 100% sure if that's correct. But I know that they really like them. So that's exciting for the isos. Ooh, I got new crested gecko feeding dish for my adult cresties, which is awesome because I've got two crusties in the tank now. We have Latte and Mochaccino. Mochaccino got a girlfriend, so this will be really nice. I like these rubber, rubber dishes. They're easy to clean, and these ledges are really easy for them to eat out of, so this is great, because I have the small ones for the babies, but I don't have an adult one yet, so they'll really like that. I got a second dish that way. I can clean one and have one in the tank. So always be prepared. We've got one of those. We've got a different type of pod for the isopod tanks. These are really great. I tend to break them up and use them in multiple tanks. So one of these tanks will do a few of my culture, or one of these tanks, one of these pods will do a few of my cultures, which is awesome. I decided to try one new food today. We've got the gecko diet with insects. So we're gonna give that one a shot, but I got a smaller bag just in case I have some picky crusties. I know that latte can be a little picky. Um, I know she really likes the fig, but I'm gonna give this one a shot too and see if she likes it just for some variety. And then I've got the big bag of the fig and insects that I know that all of my babies will eat and is very healthy and nutritionally complete for them. So that's awesome. Pangea is fantastic. Um, if you don't order Pangea or have trouble finding it, the other one that I really like is the ZooMed brand because they also put insects in. But Rapashi, however, does not. Um, so I stay away from that, even though I typically like Rapashi diets for things. Um, for my Crested Geckos, I stick with the Pangea or the ZooMed because they do have the added insect meal in there. We also have a succulent garden for one of the tanks and this is another succulent garden so give me a minute and we will check those out okay so the reason i got these succulent gardens is honestly because kirk had ordered them in to sell it stand out and i just absolutely love them they are so cute and they're relatively inexpensive i believe they're 12 dollars a piece and i mean that's a heavy resin rock and it makes a perfect accent to any kind of desert. And I got this one too, I love this one too. To any desert tank without like breaking the budget. I mean, I always like to give a shout out to the products that I know and love and use for my animals because they're great products. So yeah, those are pretty cool. The other thing we have is we do have two new dubia.com enclosures, one in here and one in the reptile room. Um, the hubby, Mr. Lot of Love, did put these together. You can see my awesome Minnie Mouse pants and <laughs> Disney Crocs in the background. Um, but yeah, we did get these. There's definitely been some upgrades since we got our last ones. These doors are now glass, which is really cool because before these were like um, acrylic or I can't think of the word, but they were like a plastic glass. And so these are now glass glass the other thing that we noticed about these is the bottom is a much heavier material it used to be the bottom and the back were made the same thickness 
and now the bottoms are thicker so they hold better which is pretty exciting these slide really well on the tracks they're still the other enclosures we have from them are still great quality but they've definitely done some upgrades that i really like and i mean honestly for a budget enclosure dubia.com's enclosures are by far my favorite hey friends so today i actually just got off work um, but today I do have a bunch of isopod orders to go out that have been purchased on eBay and then we do have a new isopod um, site on Etsy that is just for isopods it's called a lot of isos a lot of isos so if you guys check that out you can buy our isopods there some of you have been gracious enough to purchase some from us and if you haven't purchased some from us please um, Feel free to do so and then also if you guys could I would really appreciate if you could smash that like and subscribe button um, it would help out our channel more than you know and we definitely appreciate you guys continue viewing so today I'm gonna pack some isopods and I'm gonna start out with I have these containers what I do with the containers and I already did this pre video is I went ahead and I punched holes in these um, I do use like a wood burning tool to do that and then I also put holes in the sides of the containers. So I'm gonna show you guys how I do this. I've got my moss, I've got my water, I've got the fish flakes that they need to ship in, and I'm gonna pack some isopods with you guys. So here's my bin of dairy cows. You see I've got quite a lively colony going in there. So I'm gonna pull 15 of these guys and put them in the container and get them on the way to their new owner. So I'm not sure if you guys know, but isopods do have to be wet um, in order to breathe. They do breathe kind of through gills, even though they're land isopods, because there's big isopods in the ocean and those can't come out of water. So I start out by spraying the container, just a little bit of water in the bottom to make sure that that bottom moss that they are being shipped in gets moist because um, you don't want your ice pods to dry out that's bad I have gotten some feedback that's like why is the moss so wet and it's like well it kind of has to be for them to survive so I do spray the bottom of my container before I put my moss in the next thing I do is I add my moss right now I'm using orchid moss I kind of use whatever I can get economically so I can keep the price of the ice pods down um, they seem to do fine shipping in the orchid moss. Sometimes I use sphagnum, sometimes I use forest. It just depends on what I can get economically. So I've got my moss in here. Right now it's dry. I go ahead and wet it down really good. I am going to add fish flakes. I just use whatever um, to the container, make sure they've got something to eat while they are in shipping process. Okay, so now I've added my fish flakes to the top. I'm gonna put the lid on part way to make sure they don't get out. I'm gonna pull my bin and I'm gonna pull my ISOs. So after I get them all packed up, then I box them up. I print out a shipping label. I throw my business card and some other goodies in and we ship them off, but that part's really boring so I didn't film that. But it does take a decent amount of time, but I really enjoy it. I really enjoy my isopods and I want you guys to enjoy your isopods too. So that's why I want to show you guys me packing the isopods today. All right, so we are post show. We actually didn't film any at the show because it gets so busy we forget. But this is the craziness that happens post show around here. I do have my display back up already. We got some Daegu's that came back with us from Sin City. Look at how cute they are. We love us some Daegu's. And then we got the big fat bun. And I think the quote of the day is, you have a boa in a suitcase? Because, you know, reptile things. Here's Mr. Terrapin doing his thing. There's Gigi. <laughs> and the crew and we're gonna start unpacking so guys it's the middle of the night and we had the most exciting thing happen today we have baby king snakes we're not really sure what all morphs we have but these guys just hatched today they are brand new we have eight of 12 babies out of the eggs right now 
They are super excited and ready to go. Super happy, super healthy, super lively. And we are so excited to have babies. So these guys still have a little bit to go. They've got to do their shed. We got to make sure that they eat okay. But so far, so good. We are having an amazing first clutch here at A Lot of Love. This is beyond exciting. We are over the moon right now. So we're going to get these babies all taken care of and then figure out what's going on with those last four eggs. And we'll keep you updated. Thanks, guys. Right, as you can see, Pringle has completely destroyed his tank today while he's been hanging out. He's kind of already sleepy and kind of down and out for the day, but no use in cleaning it because I'm just going to rip this bottom out. Since I've had him, I have used non-stick shelf liner for him, but I'm going to switch him over to tile today just because the shelf liner does get kind of nasty after a while, and I find that the tile is much easier to clean and keep bacteria free. So we're going to go ahead and do that today, and I will show you guys the finished product and hopefully Pringle will be happy with it but I know I will be because I'll be able to keep his tank right, so, so much. I went ahead and got the tile laid in here and everything put back together but that just looks so much nicer and I'll be able to keep it so much cleaner for him because it won't absorb anything because the shelf liner I had was kind of like a rubbery grippy shelf liner that I wanted to do for Pringle because he uh you know, I just wanted him to be comfortable on the floor, but the other dragons do great on this tile. And so we went ahead and made that step for him as okay, well. Okay friends, so let's not judge me today because I just woke up. But I wanna feed our monitors today and I thought I'd bring you guys along for the ride. So we are going to be feeding, well not really monitors, but um, my two tegus, Athena and Artemis, which are black and white Argentine tegus. Then we're also going to be feeding Bruce, the Savannah Monitor, and then we have a new friend named Casper that is a Silver Ghost Tegu. So we're going to be doing some meat feeding with them today, and thought, like I said, you guys might want to come along for the ride, so let's All go. Alright, so today we have on the menu some chicken gizzards dusted in calcium and vitamin powder, and we'll see here, these guys love it. Get it. There you go. Now that's Athena. That's our little female. Well, little relatively. She is not so little. She's a very dainty eater. Oh yeah, raw meat. Alright, so next up we're gonna feed Artemis, who's usually a pretty big pig for me. I'm gonna make sure he gets some of this vitamin meat. Hey, come here, buddy. Hey. What are you doing? Are you cheesing for the camera? Huh, Athena? Are you cheesing for the camera? Artie usually goes for it a lot quicker, but I did wake him up. So he's just kind of like, what? Yeah, no, that's mommy. That's not meat. What's up? To your female. You want some? I'm gonna give it to your woman. She's like, heck yeah. You not hungry today? Usually you're all over the chicken gizzards. Oh, here, I'll leave some down for you if you don't want to eat them off the tongs. Sometimes he gets kind of weird about eating off the tongs. We gotta clean them up. Obviously they destroyed some eggs in here the other day. Oh, I can't even see them because of the reflection there. Just hanging out. So we'll go ahead and feed Bruce and come right back. Right now we are actually in process of building Bruce a brand new custom tank. So he's pretty excited about that, but he's even more excited about these chicken gizzards. 
He just noms them right down. Covered in leaves. I don't know why he has to, I, call, I joke around and say he's breading it. He always has to rub everything in his bedding. I don't know, guys. So Bruce will take down probably half of this pack, just like that. He's always hungry. I swear Savannah monitors are never not hungry. They're just bottomless pits. And they're so much fun to feed because they do take their food so well. They're just awesome. So then next, I'm gonna show off our new ghost, Silver Ghost Tegu. And we'll get him to eat some food too. Let's give Bruce one more so he doesn't get mad at me. There we go. So we're gonna see, we have never fed Casper, our new Tegu chicken gizzards before, so let's see if he likes them together. Okay, so this is Casper, our little ghost, silver ghost Tegu. Let's see if he's interested in this. I know it might be a little big for him, but he's definitely interested, he's checking it out. He is so sweet. He is the sweetest Tegu I think I've ever seen. There's some of this away for him. So he could work on that. And it looks like he's starting to shed a little bit on his face. You see a little nose flap coming up on him. And he'll probably grow pretty fast because he's just a juvenile. But we're pretty fond of him. And he is super, super sweet. We haven't had any issues with him personality-wise. I know Tegus go through that like terrible teenage stage. But he seems to be uh, super friendly, always wanting to snuggle. He's a good little tegu. I might have to cut that up into a smaller piece for him. We'll see what he does with it. See if he figures it out. If not, I will cut it up for him. But I just wanted to show him off because he is so, so pretty. And unfortunately, as you guys can see, Mav has vacated the building. We had some issues being able to contain him. Decided that we just weren't the right fit of a home for him. And we found somebody with monitor experience that was willing to take him like big monitor experience. So we decided that that was the way to go. And this is what's going to be turning into Bruce's new custom tank. So as sad as we were to see Mav leave, we got this guy to cheer ourselves up from it that we know we can handle. And we've also got our big tegus. And then, you know, Bruce will be getting bigger too. So we'll still have some sizable lizards. It's just something more that we can handle a little bit better because unfortunately for us, Mav was just, we didn't think he would be, but we wanted to be able to give him the best life possible. And it got to a point where I just didn't think we were going to be able to do that. So he's at a good home. Life is good. And we're just going to let him munch. Playing the game, is Kirk going to bleed? Apparently not. And I am sad now. Did we get the water dragon out yet? We still have, we still have a chance. Oh. Rachel hauled him over day she was here that week, and he bit her in the face the last time she hauled him. I have a scar on my finger that's the exact size and shape of his mouth. <laughs> oh, Kirk's gonna bleed. <laughs> Dang it, I'm highly disappointed now. One thing I really like to do with Bonnie is she loves to be hand-fed greens. So we sit and we do this every night and this is kind of our bonding time. And she's turned in, she was a little sassy in her teenage stage, but she's coming out of that now. Obviously she's not full grown yet. But we hang out and we hand feed greens every night together. And like I said, it just gives us a nice little time to bond. And she's definitely gotten a lot sweeter since we started doing that. But for some reason, this gal is always hungry. But she's just a regular um, hypo trans, it needs a meal trim. And she is just a happy gal. All right, so this is Panko 2.0, the breaded dragon, the revenge of the breaded dragon. And she's a big fan 
of the, what I call, alien stage. A little warm more of a... Holy crap. She, like, attacks them before I can even drop them in front of her. But she won't eat them as worms. She wants them in their alien stage. She's such a cutie pie. I'm just absolutely in love with her. Pretty sure it's a female. Not 100% sure because of the size. But uh, we're going to have to get her a really good male. She is Red Monster. And Red Monster and Sass. That is our newest girl here at a lot of love.